week that the forecast for the economy is getting a little bit better. But will swine flu put Wall Street in a trough? Here to talk about bacon and making money is the Wall watchdog on Wall Street, Chris Markowski. All right, now you're not going to talk about making bacon, though, are you? No. No, okay, I good. thought we get some kind of flu. We can't eat bacon, or can we eat bacon? I don't know how that works. Uh, apparently, you're, you're, you're okay eating bacon. Oh. It's cooked. All but right. uh, uh, Homer Simpson's all right. So, uh, speaking of cooked, are, are the numbers cooked here? What are we looking at? Because we keep hearing these uh, conflicting reports. You know, the, the GDP contracted by 6% uh, last first quarter. And, and you're hearing all these numbers about unemployment still rising. But then we hear about green shoots in the economy. What's going on? Are we coming out of this recession or not? I think that the phrase is things are getting less bad. Less bad. <laughs> Um, okay. You know, we've talked about this for a while. I mean, this is going back into last year that, you know, this there, it isn't a, a bottomless pit. It isn't a black hole. Eventually, things slowly but surely are going to start to turn. And we are going to see that. And some of the reasons, some of the things we, we talked about, articulated here on the program, is the fact that businesses have taken their inventories down. They're going to eventually need to replace those inventories. Okay. Yesterday, we saw a terrible GDP number, but... Inside that GDP number, you saw that consumer spending was up 2.2%. And you also saw that uh, business spending was so far down, eventually it has to turn. And there's signs that the to... housing market is stabilizing as well, to some degree. To some degree, the housing market will stabilize. And, and once again, housing market is all about your perspective. If right. you're going out looking for a house right now, you're like, woohoo! You know, housing right. market's great. I can if get a great deal sell. right now. <laughs> Try to sell, it's a different story. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, real quickly, how, what effect is this whole swine flu thing going to have on not only our economy but the world economy how serious could it, be? it it depends on how the whole thing plays out you know right now it's in the beginning and when the first the story first came out the the response to the market was kind of muted because it's almost like uh, the little boy who cried wolf we've seen this before we've seen it with SARS we've seen that with West Nile we've seen this with the Asian flu virus I mean I think Kia was right prior I think people need to be concerned and need to pay attention you know microbes don't discriminate they don't care what part political party you in it doesn't make any difference you need to be very very careful however we do not need to panic closing schools closing the the border, I think it's pushing it a little bit. Okay, moving on to the car industry, GM and Chrysler, uh, there's different scenarios there, but both of these include uh, a lot of ownership by the, the government, in GM's case, oh, yeah, yeah. over half, and in Chrysler's case, over half of ownership by the UAW, the uh, United Auto Workers. Uh, uh, isn't this the kind of stuff that we're not supposed to do in this country? Ah, uh, yes, I, I, I would agree with you there. Definitely, um, it's kind of scary to think that, imagine being Ford Motor Company, put it this way, you're Ford, and you've got the number one selling car in this country for 27 years straight. Your number one competition right now is Uncle Sam, who can say, hey, you know what, I make the rules too, and that Ford F-150 better get 50 miles to a gallon or you're going to have to discontinue it. It's a very, very scary, scary situation here. You know, there's a great, uh, scary movie called Pet Cemetery. Yeah. There was a line in that movie, was King. sometimes dead is better. Well, some of these companies maybe should have gone by the wayside. Uh, maybe we should break these things up. Maybe we'll see that today with Chrysler. Of course, Chris, you know, so President much. Obama is starting his 101st day in office today, and with many on both sides of the aisle giving the president mixed grades, particularly uh, on the economy. So here, from, here for some Economics 101 is the watchdog on Wall Street, Chris Markowski. Thanks for staying with us, Chris. It's our first time together. I know, it comes. is our there first time. Okay, so let's talk Chrysler and the possible bankruptcy mm -hmm. uh, later today, and uh, what effect that will have on the markets, if any. I don't think it's going to really have much of an effect on the market. I mean, a lot of these things are already priced in. I think the markets actually might be surprised and happy if the thing just went away and went the way of bankruptcy. Markets like to be markets. Okay. When the government is involved, then it's no longer a market. The government's picking winners and losers. And last fall when we were talking about this and the government sticking billions of dollars in TARP money to these various different automakers, it didn't allow the markets to function, which meaning that the, the weak must kind of go away right. and then the strong will survive. If car Chrysler goes by the, the wayside, I don't think anybody, it'll, it'll, it'll bother markets at all. I know the president has come out and said, you know what, it might be a good thing if, if it goes into bankruptcy. may come back stronger mm -hmm. than ever. Um, and as we go back to look at his 100 days uh, press conference, you were talking about he doesn't want to be in the auto business to begin with. Actually, it was, it was encouraging. That was the, how he, they actually ended the, uh, the press conference yesterday. It was a question from the Wall Street Journal reporter talking about, well, you know, you are own a major shareholder in Chrysler General Motors and he's like I don't want to be involved in the auto business I don't want to have ownership stakes in these things and we want to give these back the quicker that can happen the better off we're going to be it's not right that the government's going to be a shareholder and also the umpire in That's the game because they create the rules okay so what did you think last night about the press conference Just I think he did. I mean, I think he did really good. He's very good at, at press conferences. There's no doubt about that at all. The all direction. Are. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, they're good at, at, at delivering speeches here and there. I, you know, some of the points I agree with, some of the points I didn't agree with, but that's what makes the country great. Overall, great. 
Uh, at the press conference? Or of the 100 days? First 100 days. Economically, uh, I don't like a lot of the socialist stuff. I'll give them a C+. Plus. A C plus average. All right, Chris. On Wall Street is back. Mr. Chris Markowski is here. He's answering your money questions on how to make a dollar out of 15 cents. We've been talking all things financial with our money guy, Mr. Chris Markowski, the watchdog on Wall Street. He's back to answer your questions and make more dollars and cents. Good morning, Chris. Good morning. All right, so uh, you joined us when we were discussing this woman who's suing Chase because the bank called her husband Mm -hmm. and essentially outed her that she had this $800,000 kitty that she was uh, hiding from him. Yeah. And uh, she's now suing, saying, look, you, you broke federal pri privacy laws. We got a ton of email about this. Uh, Cheryl, uh, and this is very indicative of the email in Spring, Spring Hill, Ohio, says, the year is 2009 and we are still dealing with the issue of women's rights. No one has the right to access someone else's bank account without proper authorization. I had a similar incident happen to me, only the bank allowed my brother complete access to the account. Uh, so a lot of people, uh, and, and particularly a lot of women writing in, fired up about this issue because they're saying, uh, look, you know, no, no matter what you think it says about my marriage, I have the right to have private accounts. They're absolutely right. But on the other side of the coin, so do men. And this is something that I deal with all the time in my business. Um, our financial planning firm, we help everybody out, whether they're just starting out or whether they've got 10, 20 million dollars. And it's something that I've encountered throughout my career, you know, helping people out in regards to this, is the issues of money. Yeah. These are things that really need to be discussed, and I'm sure your matchmaker, matchmaker will get into this as well, <laughs> before you get married. Um, in this situation, this lady in Long Island, her husband was day trading, gambling the money away. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that's nonsensical. I mean, in my household, my wife does not work. Technically, she doesn't go out and work, but she works every day. She takes the kids there everywhere. However, I'm not going to go out, even though I am the breadwinner of the house, going out and spending some item that I shouldn't be. I mean, we have to discuss these things. That's what marriage is about. And all this finance, this all comes in line with financial planning. Quickly, because uh, we only have a few seconds left, but are there ways that people can set up accounts where they can be even more assured that no one will find out about them? Yeah, there's ways you can go ahead and do that. You might want to get a post office box. You want to be all sly and everything like that. But you have to ask yourself the question, you know, okay, you may go ahead and do this, but, you know, what is this going to amount to down the road and how is this going to hurt me? There's, for every action, there's a repercussion. Thank you, Chris.